You are still disappointed that you lost in a karaoke. Absolutely. In Beijing 22 years ago, I was beaten by a Taiwanese Elvis impersonator. We found that impersonator <laughs> and he's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You know the voice, that iconic, soulful voice that propelled Led Zeppelin to the heights of rock royalty. But do you truly know the man behind that golden throat? Robert Plant's life has been an ever-evolving journey from humble beginnings to deeply private and disheartening tragedies. His humble beginnings. Before we get into the turbulent story of Robert Plant, we need to go back to the very start. It was Robert's humble origins and tough early years that first sparked the restless, creative spirit within him. The driving force that refused to be confined to any single musical style or image. Robert Anthony Plant was born on August 20, 1948, in the industrial English town of West Bromwich, located in the Black Country region of the West Midlands. Post-World War II, the area faced economic decline as Britain's manufacturing base shifted abroad. It was into this uncertain climate that Robert entered the world, the youngest child of mining engineer Robert C. Plant and housewife Annie Celia. Times were financially difficult for the working-class Plant family. Robert's father worked for various fledgling aircraft companies as they evolved out of the country's dismantled military industry. Money was scarce, yet the tight-knit community provided support networks helping families stay afloat. It was a tough upbringing, but one instilling in Robert Strong virtues of resilience, community, and perseverance through hardship that would serve him lifelong. From an early age, Robert Plant showed sensitivity and creativity beyond his years. Plant gained an interest in singing and rock and roll music at an early age. In an interview with Andrew Denton on the Denton Talk Show in 1994, Plant stated his desire as a 10-year-old to be like Elvis Presley. When I was a kid, I used to hide behind the curtains at home at Christmas, and I used to try and be Elvis. There was a certain ambiance between the curtains and the French windows. There was a certain sound there for a 10-year-old. Along with this, school was a real challenge for the young daydreamer Robert. His boisterous and lively personality made it hard for him to focus on academic interests. He just barely passed his classes. Instead, Robert found joy and comfort in playing soccer matches with friends on the weekends and hanging out with the neighborhood kids. Growing up surrounded by industrial factories and smokestacks, Robert's imagination was captured at a young age by the soulful sounds of American blues music drifting across the Atlantic to British shores. By smuggling in records and listening to broadcasts on Radio Luxembourg, he became completely fascinated by legendary blues artists like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, and Elvis Presley. This early exposure to blues ignited a powerful passion within Robert that would drive his ambitions and dreams going forward. However, achieving musical success seemed like an impossibly far-fetched goal from his vantage point in the gloomy, working-class outskirts of Birmingham. His family fully expected the restless young Robert to follow in his father's footsteps into the stable but unglamorous work of coal mining. Little did they know a completely different destiny was emerging for this teenager determined to walk his own path, finding his voice in the blues. At age 16, Robert quit accountancy college after just two weeks, realizing traditional education was not for him. With only basic schooling and no career training, Finding steady work proved very difficult in 1960s Britain, which was still recovering economically after World War II rationing. Robert drifted between menial, low-paying jobs like road construction work, hoping music could eventually become more than just a hobby for him. Robert joined up with bands playing at small clubs on the growing British blues music circuit, honing his raw vocal talents. His powerful and soulful singing voice stood out, channeling the spirit of old blues legends while also infusing it with his own unique quality. However, these gigs remained at an amateur level, barely earning enough money for gas, let alone being able to support himself fully. As his 1968 marriage to his childhood sweetheart Maureen Wilson approached, finding some financial stability became crucial for starting a family. While working various odd jobs and irregular shifts, Robert remained dedicated to performing music at night whenever possible. 
he recorded three little-known single records for CBS, which went completely unnoticed by the public as he continued treading water, chasing an elusive dream of fame. Discouragement started to set in as the harsh realities of working-class life clashed with his rock star ambitions. Had Robert listened to societal expectations, his incredible vocal gift may have gone forever undiscovered, like so many other working-class men of that era. But inspired by the stories of daring American blues musicians who overcame even greater odds, Robert persisted and hustled relentlessly to pursue his musical passions against all practical reasoning. The Rise of Led Zeppelin In late 1968, Robert finally got his big break when he was introduced to guitarist Jimmy Page, who was looking for a new lead singer for his band after leaving the Yardbirds. When Jimmy heard Robert powerfully belt out classic blues songs during his audition, he was completely transformed and in awe. Jimmy realized that the potent musical chemistry between him and Robert could take rock music in an exciting evolutionary new direction. Renaming the band Led Zeppelin to symbolize them soaring to new heights, their self-titled debut album in 1969 took the heavy blues sound that Robert and Jimmy had developed while touring clubs and amped it up tremendously. With Robert's searing, scorching vocal performances and the album's raw, unrestrained guitar riffs, they essentially created the blueprint and prime example of the new hard rock genre. Led Zeppelin's music was perfectly suited to be played in huge arenas, virtually inventing that larger-than-life concert format. As the years went by, each new Led Zeppelin album outsold the previous one. Their 1970 album Led Zeppelin II firmly established the band's signature hard rock sound. Then their untitled 1971 fourth album and 1975's Physical Graffiti were considered masterpieces, containing anthemic classic songs co-written by Robert that cemented Led Zeppelin's status as the biggest and most popular band in the entire world. On stage, Robert absolutely captivated audiences with his overflowing charisma and energy. He mesmerized fans by wildly dancing around and wearing suggestive, revealing costumes that accentuated his muscular physique, driving both men and women in the crowds into a frenzy. Robert became the ultimate male sex symbol of the rock world, rivaling even iconic figures like Mick Jagger and embodying a magnetic blend of androgyny and masculine dominance. Nothing exemplified Led Zeppelin's unrestrained, majestic power more than Robert's raw, primal screams and yelps cutting through the air alongside Jimmy Page's blitzing guitar pyrotechnics. Over their decade of complete dominance at the top, the evolution of rock music itself seemed to parallel Robert's own metamorphosis from a shy young kid into a larger-than-life golden god of affrontman, tragedy, and turmoil. By the late 1970s, the members of Led Zeppelin had fully indulged in the most excessive rock star behaviors. Their non-stop touring by private jet and stays at secluded English mansions fueled rampant substance abuse issues within the band. Then in 1977, tragedy struck when Robert's five-year-old son Carrick suddenly passed away from a mysterious stomach illness. While grieving this devastatingly sad loss on tour across America, Robert questioned whether he could continue performing. The only thing allowing him to keep going was his loyalty to his bandmates, as the music became a necessary coping mechanism. Battling both the profound grief of losing a child and the effect of the band's excessive lifestyle, Robert's well-being and future were at a crossroads during this dark period. The shocking personal loss made him reevaluate the sustainability of Led Zeppelin's non-stop cycle, amid the haze of addiction issues. Somehow he persevered through sheer determination, aided by the support of his closest friends and bandmates who refused to let the legendary group implode. In 1975, Robert nearly lost his life when the car he was riding in with his wife Maureen crashed and overturned while vacationing in Rhodes, Greece. He suffered extremely serious injuries that required months of recovery time back home in England. During this period, Robert was unable to participate in recording Led Zeppelin's next album, Presence, The Divorce and Breakdown. 
This traumatic ordeal put immense strain on Robert's marriage to Maureen. Their relationship was already difficult due to his constant touring and travel around the world, as well as his overindulgence in the rock star lifestyle's excesses. After 15 years together, Robert and Maureen's marriage finally fell apart and they divorced in 1980, right as Led Zeppelin was going through its turbulent final months as a band. The severe car accident, his long recovery period, and the growing marital problems all contributed to an extremely tumultuous phase in Robert's life during Led Zeppelin's later years. The pressure and emotional toll from these overlapping personal crises ultimately played a role in the legendary band's demise just a few months later. The combination of physical injuries and deep emotional turmoil pushed Robert to the breaking point by the late 1970s. After drummer John Bonham's shocking death in 1980, Led Zeppelin disbanded. In the aftermath, Robert stepped away from music completely for a while to pursue other interests like training to become an educator. However, he struggled tremendously with alcoholism during this period, slipping into a hazy fog of substance abuse that threatened to derail his life entirely. Robert was only able to avoid sinking even further into addiction and crisis by relying on a strong support system of loved ones and making the difficult choice to confront his harsh realities head-on. As the 1980s began and new wave music pushed classic rock aside, his determination to get sober and regain control allowed him to persist, even as his legendary band receded into history. Turning his life around after the excesses of his Led Zeppelin days was an immense personal battle. His solo triumph, against all odds, Robert persevered through 1980s personal turmoil. With Phil Collins's encouragement, he launched his solo career in 1982 with Pictures at 11. To widespread surprise considering Led Zeppelin's immense shadow, it scored a number 9 UK chart position and platinum sales proving an artistic and commercial victory lap. Robert shed the debauchery almost killing him, prioritizing health through moderation. Meeting friend Jeannie Donnelly helped stabilize his personal life, settling at their Welsh farmhouse providing serenity countering years on the road. Between marrying his wife Maureen and recording successful albums like 1983's The Principle of Moments, Robert rebounded stronger confronting issues many rock legends never survived. His early solo shows proved remarkably successful, arena-scale statements cementing Robert as a singular force regardless of backing bands. Critics praised his artistry for evolving beyond blues into richer folk rock, enriching songs with spiritual musings. By the decade's end, Robert found contentment despite ups and downs, a sentiment perhaps best captured by the 1988 album Now and Zen's international hits Tall Cool One and Ship of Fools. His triumph proved a testament to the human spirit's resilience in facing loss and addiction, yet still pursuing passions against all odds. Perhaps Karich's tragedy instilled a deeper purpose, with every note now seasoned by life's complexities seldom explored by most rockers his age. Emerging from darkness, Robert flourished proudly flying the flag for maturity in a genre glorifying youth, embracing the future. Throughout the 1980s, Robert maintained a collaborative friendship with Jimmy Page despite playing down Led Zeppelin reunion queries. In 1985, they reunited briefly for Live Aid alongside John Paul Jones, a touching moment for aging boomers, but nothing substantial. By decade's end, critical and commercial tides turned against Robert's cerebral solo work as aggro guitar bands reigned. In 1994, Robert accepted an invitation, finally rejoining Jimmy for the live album No Quarter Unleaded. Their MTV Unplugged performance renewed magic between the iconic musicians as world tours saw arenas packed nostalgically, reliving key Zep compositions in acoustic arrangements. It proved cathartic closure for aging fans, if not the artists moving forward creatively retooled. Their 1998 album Walking Into Clarksdale showed both still had musicality for original material, albeit to lukewarm response. Always evolving, Robert focused on side projects like 1999's folk outfit Priory of Brian. Nearing his 50s, Robert grew gradually more interested in family life, 
Even performing occasional gigs under monikers like Honey Drippers showcased relaxation into lower-key roots music. By 2000s close, Robert retained respect for pushing boundaries throughout a storied five-decade career. From T-Rex worshipper to Zeppelin's undisputed frontman to critically acclaimed solo visionary, he proved artists can evolve while staying true to themselves. An inspiration for lifers like Robert, never content standing still. Rebirth through Bluegrass Bonanza. In 2007, something very unexpected happened that took Robert Plant's musical journey down a completely new path. After spending most of his career focused on rock and blues, Robert had a chance conversation that made him decide to try working in a style he had never explored before, bluegrass music. For five decades, bluegrass was a genre Robert had paid no attention to at all. But now he was agreeing to go into the studio and record an album with bluegrass star Alison Krauss. Robert teamed up with renowned producer T-Bone Burnett and some of the best bluegrass musicians from Nashville. Together, they blended different American roots music styles like bluegrass, folk, and country into something totally new and unique. They recorded brand new versions of classic songs written by legendary artists like Mel Tillis and Gene Clark, putting Robert's unmistakable vocals over a bluegrass musical backdrop. When the album Raising Sand was released in October 2007, it was a smash hit in a way that no previous Robert Plant album had ever been. Despite him spending decades as a rock star, this bluegrass collaboration actually broke onto the country music charts. The album went on to win a stunning five Grammy Awards, including the prestigious Album of the Year prize, which was a major upset since that award usually goes to mainstream country albums. With rave reviews from critics and a successful global touring show playing theaters, Robert found a brand new creative purpose and outlet by collaborating so far outside of his Led Zeppelin roots and comfort zone. Joining Allison's bluegrass band allowed him to make intimately scaled music in a collaborative environment without any of the bombast of his rock star past weighing him down. This bluegrass detour re-energized Robert's artistic spirit tremendously. Getting to work with Allison Krauss's talented yet laid-back bluegrass band was very freeing for Robert. At 60 years old, he loved the intimate, small-scale nature of bluegrass music. It connected him to musical traditions across generations in a way his bombastic rock star persona could not. Without the pressures and expectations that came with his Led Zeppelin fame, Robert felt free to simply follow his creative whims. He took this newfound freedom and recorded a 2013 solo folk album called Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar. Robert didn't worry about how commercially successful it would be or whether it would be popular. As an artist finally at peace, those metrics were irrelevant to him. The success of Raising Sand opened up a whole new creative world for Robert. He was liberated from just being seen as a blues rock vocalist, a label he had since his early days in 1968. Instead of having to rely on bravado and performing the greatest hit sets like aging rock stars often do, Robert could focus on expressing himself through nuanced vocals and thoughtful lyrics. By wholeheartedly embracing new genres like bluegrass and folk, later in his career, Robert joyfully led by example. He showed it's possible for artists to remain fertile, creative, and artistically vital, even in life's later chapters. His enthusiasm for continual reinvention gave him a vibrant energy unlike many of his contemporaries still stuck in the past. Evolution through artistry. Even after turning 70 years old, Robert's thirst for creative exploration never diminished. He constantly worked on new projects that blurred the lines between different musical genres. In 2010, he revisited the Americana folk sound of his 1960s band with the album Band of Joy. Then in 2012, the Sensational Space Shifters album fused styles from around the world through improvised psychedelic jams. These efforts allowed Robert to expand his artistic horizons much further than his aging rock peers stuck nostalgically replaying their old hits. Experimental albums like 2017's spoken word Carry Fire with its mystical themes took Robert into thought-provoking artistic territories that classic rock figures seldom ever ventured into. 
At the same time, the Saving Grace album brought things full circle with intimate acoustic country blues jam sessions reminiscent of Robert performing in small folk clubs in his early days. Through all these diverse, unorthodox projects, Robert demonstrated he had much more creative depth than just being a singer tied to one specific brand or sound. His ability to continually reinvent himself and delve into new musical realms defied conventional norms. It was a key cornerstone of Robert's remarkably long-lasting career vitality. No matter the stylistic left turn, Robert fearlessly forged ahead artistically. He refused to be pigeonholed or to rest on his laurels as a classic rock icon. This openness to constant exploration is what allowed him to create such a vast, multi-dimensional body of work over many decades. Robert's endless curiosity to explore new musical frontiers is what kept him feeling and acting youthful, even as he grew older. Whether it was headlining the prestigious Glastonbury Festival in the UK in 2019 at age 70, or doing co-headlining concert tours with his bluegrass partner Alison Krauss, Robert maintained a vibrant, energetic presence on stage. He wasn't driven by a desire for commercial success or hit records anymore. The boundless creative spirit fueling Robert's artistry seemed unstoppable, even in his eighth decade of life, inspiring audiences across multiple generations as well as his fellow musicians. Even when facing serious health scares in 2020 and the devastating loss of his brother Michael, Robert's driving passion for music never wavered. It remained a life-sustaining force for him. Then, in 2021, he reunited with the critically acclaimed Alison Krauss for another collaborative album called Raise the Roof. Their musical chemistry and magic was still perfectly intact, showing that even six decades into his journey, Robert continued to grow as a naturally gifted singer and songwriter. No matter which creative direction he headed, he was always evolving, an enduring legacy. Over Robert Plant's decade-spanning career, from headlining arenas worldwide with Led Zeppelin to his latter years boldly exploring new genres as a solo artist, he demonstrated the transformative power of passionate artistic expression and perseverance. Despite facing profound personal losses, struggles with addiction, and the ups and downs of the music industry that broke many others, Robert's creative drive shone through. His resilient spirit allowed him to ceaselessly innovate across half a century. Rather than resign himself to the nostalgia circuit churning out greatest hits in his 70s, like many aging rock stars, this master of reinvention blurred musical boundaries. He embraced unexpected collaborations across Americana, world music, folk, and other styles without constraint. After knowing about Robert Plant's constant reinvention over the decades, what do you think drives an artist to evolve their sound and style so fearlessly? Share your thoughts in the comments section and make sure to subscribe to the channel for updates. Thanks for watching.